Hello everyone, in this video we will transform this thing to this one and to achieve this look we will use something called light baking. I will show you how to set it up, why and when we should use light baking and explain the most important settings in Unity's light baker. Let's get started. So I prepared this scene in URP with a few free assets, links are in the description, but you can use your own if you want. I also needed to convert these materials with the URP converter, other than that this is a default scene. First, in the hierarchy, we have a directional light. I just got rid of it, we won't need it right now. Then, go to the lighting settings. If you don't have it open, then go to Windows, Rendering, Lighting. Drag it next to the Inspector window and under the Environment tab, at the Skybox Material, select None. And also, set the ambient color to black. At the camera, in the Environment option, change the background type from Skybox to Solid Color. I already prepared a dark grey color for this one. Now we need some light sources to lit up our assets, so let's get some. I found a torch in Unity's Light Optimization Tutorial asset. Link is in the description. I opened it in a separate Unity project and exported the one I needed. To do that, just find the asset you need, right click in the folder and export package. And make sure you have include dependencies checked so it will bring all the materials, textures and models with it. And save it somewhere on your PC and drag it to the current project and hit export. After I imported, I just removed the sparkle and smoke objects. I won't need them in this scene. I got this porch pole and I dragged one of them into the scene and placed it around the statue. And we already got some lights in our scene. If you open up the torch pole, you can see it has a torch light object. It has a light component which is set to point light. Also under that, the rendering mode is set to real time. Well, in this tutorial, we will be focusing on bake light, so let's change it to bake light. First, we need to see that we don't have any shadows in our scene, and this is because on the point light, by default, at the shadows option, the shadow type is set to no shadows. We need to change it to soft shadows, and right away, we have some shadows on our statue. And then select the torch pool and apply these changes to the prefab. Other than the shadows, not much change yet, but we will get there in a second. Next, I'm going to change the colors of the lights. I already prepared with this two color. You can use any color you want. I also increased the intensity to four. And just to make it look cool, I will make the torch material color on the right side to have bluish flame. First, just select the torch light, click on the material and select material. Duplicate it and change the color at the emission map to a bluish color. And increase the intensity to around 7 or 8. So it has a small glowing effect. Under that, change the global illumination to baked and apply this material to the ones on the right side. After all that, I still need to change the flame colors as well. Select the two fire in the hierarchy and in the particle system at the start color, just change it to a bluish one again. And the scene looks pretty good by now. But you might ask, it is already looks good, why do we need to bake it? Well, the main thing is performance. If you have too many light sources, then you can run into performance issues because it will significantly significantly eat up your resources. Real-time lighting is really a calculation heavy process. I will dig into it deeper in my next video, so if you don't want to miss it, hit that subscribe button. What does baking do? Well, basically the process of pre-calculating the lighting information and storing it in textures, which are then applied to the objects in the scene. But, and it's a capital BOT, it has one disadvantage. It can only be used on static objects. So for example, a character that moves cannot be baked. So with that in mind, let's bake our light. First, we need to make our objects static. Select the objects we want to bake in our light map and in the top right corner, check the static option. And yes, change it to the children. With all that set up, head to the lighting tab and create a light map settings, clicking the new button. Then under the light mapping settings, at the light mapper option, select progressive GPU and at the bottom, hit generate lighting. Am I going to take a while, so see you in a bit. So it's finished and there are a few issues with it at the moment. If you check out the light, it's all over the place. Some has orange light when it has no exposure to it, it looks pretty bad. But what's causing this? Well, this is because the model did not come with a light map UV. Luckily, it's pretty easy to generate one in Unity. Just go to the model's FBX file, then there's just check the generate light map UV and hit apply. Then rebake the scene and voila, much better. Now let's talk about these light mapping settings, just the most important ones. First, there are the direct indirect and environmental samples. When the light hits a surface, a lot of things happen. Some of it gets absorbed, some of it 
be abducted, it can change its direction, etc. So we need different sampling methods to properly simulate real life lighting. To demonstrate what these samples do, go to the scene view and in the draw mode, select bake light map view. So how's the baking works? But we shoot a number of rays to a random direction from each texel, and if it's find the light, it means it has exposure to it, so it is lit by that source. So on the light map, it adds a lighted area on that texel. And here comes the different samples because it gets a little more complicated. Starting with the direct samples, the direct samples are only looking for light sources. Imagine a ray that comes out of the texel and hits the point light, then the texel knows it has exposure to the light, so it is lit. In the default settings, let's see the direct samples count, for example, it is 32, which means it will shoot 32 rays from each texel to random directions. Then the indirect samples, well, as we know, a light will be reflected from surfaces and it can also lit objects. So imagine a texel in a hidden place when we shoot the direct samples and it doesn't find any light source, but it finds a texel or has exposure to the light source, then it will be lit by the reflection. Just the intensity will be much less and also tinted with the other texels color. You can imagine if the light bounces from, let's say, a red apple, the light that hits your eyes will be tinted red. Of course, with every bounce, the intensity decreases. In the latest version of Unity, we can set the number of bounces in the settings up to 100, but in my opinion, 4 to 6 bounces will be plenty. The last one is the environment samples, are uh, basically the same as the indirect samples. The only difference is it looking for the sky and it will be tinted with the sky's color. Then the light map resolution, which defines how many texels, which means pixels on the picture, will be used on one unit on the scene. So in a nutshell, if we have one unit by one unit square, it will bake 40 texels on it. Next is filtering. If you set it to none on the shadows, you can see those are pixelated and the baked light has some noise as well. If you set it to advanced, then you have two options of filtering mode, Gaussian and Atros. Most of the time we can use Gaussian and it will be good enough and it's less computational heavy. What it does, it blurs the pixels together between two texels along one pixel, but you can increase it to five if you need. And Atros is similar. The difference is it detects intersecting geometries too, so it will have a little better result. And there are the noises, which are AI-based filters, so it will decide what to blur and what not to blur based on an algorithm, which is a pretty powerful tool. And in occlusion, if you use it, it will calculate the lighting in the corners and cracks where the light behaves slightly differently and allow us to have more realistic bake. And then the light map size defines the whole light map's texture size in pixels. If you increase it, the size of the light map will be bigger, which will use more memory. Of course, the higher the resolution, clearer the image. It's a good practice if we use low settings when we experimenting with our bake and when we think it's good enough, just crank up the settings for the final bake. Here's a picture of the light map settings where I highlighted with blue the ones that affect only the baking time and with red ones that will affect the performance during runtime. So with those in mind, let's check out our bake now. We still have some artifacts around our objects and that is because of the light map compression. It does reduce the size of the light map significantly but may result in these artifacts. So I just turn it off in this case. It's useful though when you are developing for mobile platforms. Okay, one last thing before our final bake. We can define every object individually, how much space can it have in our light map. If you select the statue in the mesh renderer under the light mapping option called scaling light map. And this is a multiplier. If you go back to the bake light map view, as you can see our statue has a little bigger squares than the floor. And this means it will occupy less space in the light map texture. If you check it out now, you can see it occupies around the quarter of the light map. And let's see what happens if we increase it to, let's say, 4. As we expected, now it occupies much more space in the light map. So this is useful, for example, if there are objects in the background, you can decrease this multiplier to less than 1 and it will be lower resolution. And on the more important object, use a higher multiplier. And finally, the final bake. Crank up the settings and give it a go.
And it finished and we still can make it a little better with something called post-processing. And I just used these settings. And voila, our final result. If you want to learn more about the light baking, there are an excellent video about the topic, link is in the description. Also, if you want me to do one about real-time lighting and many other features of Unity, let me know in the comments. And if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And finally, you might be interested in this video. Check it out and see you in the next one.